Good evening, and welcome to Dr. Peace Theater. My name is Dr. Dennis Business. And tonight, tonight we will continue our dive into the magic of the unicorn. We will find it and we will claim it for our own friends. And that is where we begin tonight. When we last left the forest, we were met with a choice. We had learned that our village well water has become sour and tainted. So, heading out to see the eldest and wisest person, you went to Marie Claire's house. While there, she gave you a protective pendant to wear, just for safety. From her house, you decided to set out to the graveyard, a place of woe. From there, met with a choice. Do you go to the church, sitting in a valley with a very tall steeple? Or do you head for the rolling hills? We will walk towards the hills. Even though the path to the graveyard is all downhill, you are hot and thirsty by the time you arrive there. You sit in the shade of a drooping tree to cool off. As you watch parched leaves float to the dusty ground, you consider the next line of the riddle. In a place that's high but low. What can be both high and low? Looking around, you notice the rolling slopes of the hills along the far side of the graveyard. They seem to be both high and low. But then the church bell rings, striking noon. Turning, you realize the steeple and the church itself also fit the riddle. The church is in a low valley, but the steeple towers high above the village. You decide to climb to the top of the highest hill. Once there, you wipe your brow and look around. Feeling a little perplexed, you remind yourself of the next line of the riddle. Watch which way the bat doth go. But there are no bats in sight. As you pace impatiently, wondering what to do, you come upon a cave opening near the top of the hill. You poke your head inside, but it is too dark to see anything. Hello! Hello! You call, but only your own voice echoes back. The cave seems like a perfect place to find a bat and maybe even the sorceress as well. If you think it is best to watch for a bat before you do anything else, turn to page 24. If you enter the cave to look for a bat, turn to page 33. Sweat streams down your face as you wait by the cave. At sunset, you finally spot a bat zigzagging through the air. Instead of flying into the cave beside you, it soars to the side of the hill where you follow it into a second cave you haven't seen before. You shiver with excitement as you grope your way through the darkness, listening to the sound of beating wings. Suddenly, lightning strikes across your path, striking the ground just inches below your toes. Before you can catch your breath, a second bolt flashes followed immediately by yet another. Your heart is pounding with terror when you hear someone mutter, Magic mother of Merlin! Where's the thunder? Who's there? You call nervously. An enormous flash of lightning illuminates the cave, revealing a wizened old woman draped in purple velvet. A visitor! She exclaims. And the next thing you know, Daylight has replaced the darkness. Congratulations! She cackles. It's been 261 years since anyone has been able to find me. I hope I didn't scare you. I was just practicing my storms. For the life of me, I can't get the thunder to work. You open your mouth to say hello, but instead of your voice, a deep rumble of thunder emerges from the back of your throat. 
There's the thunder! She shrieks gleefully. You are afraid to open your mouth again. Don't be shy, child, says the sorceress warmly. I want to know why you've come. Hesitantly, you part your lips a bit. No thunder roars, so you tell the sorceress about the tainted water in your village well. She shakes her head. Sorry to disappoint you, child, but I can't clean up that mess in your well. Water is not my domain. Never has been. Never will be. Why, I can't even create rain to go with my lightning. And now thunder! You are undaunted. Oh, three. You are undaunted. What about unicorns? Do you know anything about them? You ask the sorceress. I've heard they can purify water. These words have barely left your lips when you see a handsome unicorn stepping lightly around the cave. You reach out to stroke its flank, but the unicorn vanishes abruptly. Just an illusion, the sorceress explains. It's as close as I can come to creating a real unicorn, but it's no good for cleaning water. Have you ever seen a real unicorn? You ask. Several times, she replies casually. There's a unicorn living right here in the forest. Can you tell me where to find it in the forest? She shakes her head. I'm afraid not, but I should be able to help you some other way. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to change into something more comfortable. I always think more clearly as the wind. You watch with astonishment as she flings her purple robe over her shoulder and spins until she seems to be a lavender tornado. The next thing you know, the tornado fades and a cold wind rushes around the cave, howling and shrieking. A violet cloud slowly forms and from it, the sorceress emerges. I've got it! she announces breathlessly. I can cast one of two spells that may help you with the unicorn. I can give you the power to speak with animals, or I can knit you a golden net for catching magical beasts. Take your pick. Do you answer, I want to be able to talk with animals? Or do you say, would you please make me the golden net? That was our third attempt at reading The Magic of the Unicorn. I think we're doing much better than we did last time. Last time, that, that, was, that was just practice meeting a girl in the forest and being done. That was... I think that might have been the quickest way to die. It was like two choices and then you're married. Um, this time we went from Mary Claire's house and then we went to our place of woe, which was the graveyard. And then the choices were high but low. We chose the hills instead of the church. And then the watch which way the bat doth go. We had a choice to sit there and wait for a bat or go and look for one in the cave. And now, now the choices get serious. This just isn't about, you know, this just isn't about go to the right or the left. This is an ethical question. What do you do when you have to save the village? What do you do? Do you get the golden net and get it done? Or do you learn how to talk to animals and try to reason with the unicorn, I guess? But we can deal with that next time. Because this has been Dr. Peace Theater. And my name is Dr. Dennis Business. And as always, my friend.